Alright guys, we're going to do the rest of the skeleton today. So let's start off with the lovely vertebrae. We're doing axial skeleton first. So obviously these are vertebrae. Um, all you really think you need to know is that they're cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, and also some sacral vertebrae. So cervical is going to be the first seven. Uh, the next 12 are going to be thoracic. They're going to be connected to some ribs. After that you have five uh, lumbar vertebrae, and then you have your sacral vertebrae. So down here is your sacrum, leading to your little coccyx or coccygeal vertebrae down here. We can turn them around. Come here, Herbert. Between the vertebrae, we have intervertebral discs. So these will be your intervertebral discs here. And if you look from the side, you can actually see that there's holes between the vertebrae called intervertebral foramen or foramina, this being where your spinal nerves are gonna come out of your, basically your spinal cord. Uh, after that, we're gonna move on to the vertebrae down on the table. So he's just gonna have to hang out for a minute. So your typical vertebrae just means that it has all the parts that a normal vertebrae has. So don't worry about the typical part. So what are the parts of a vertebrae? Whether you're talking about the thoracic, the lumbars, or the the cervical. First, let's say, how do we tell the difference? So, Kelly's crazy, but that's all right. You guys, if you look at this, it looks like an animal that lives in Africa. It looks kind of like a giraffe to me. So, if it's a giraffe, it's going to be a thoracic vertebrae. If you look at this guy, it looks kind of like a moose, a moose that lives up in Canada. So, this moose is going to be lumbar vertebrae. And if it doesn't look like any animal at all, and it has three holes, one, two, and three, it's going to be a cervical vertebrae. Just so you can tell them apart. Now, what are the parts? first part is going to be the big part here. This is where the weight of your body actually crushes down on. So this is going to be a centrum. So the centrum is here, here, and here. It's also called the body. You can call it either one. That's fine. The vertebral or neural arch is going to be basically this section of bone that wraps around the vertebral foramen. So it's going to be the pedicles, which are here and here. Pedicle, 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 pedicle. And then the lamina, which is going to be here and here. So you take your pedicle, your lamina, your lamina, and your pedicle, and you make an arch called the vertebral arch. Sounds good. The nose of your animals, here, here, and here, is going to be the spinous process. So the spinous processes are there. Transverse process means goes to the side. So this is going to be a transverse processes here and here, transverse here and here, and then transverse here and here. Uh, moving along, so art the articular processes are just going to be lumps of bone that stick up or down. So the superior articular processes are going to be these lumps of bones here. The inferior are going to be the lumps of bones here and here. So again, on the giraffe, superior articular processes are here. Inferior are going to be here and here. Um, this guy is going to be superior here, inferior down here. Moving along, so just in cervical vertebrae, uh, they got a couple of special things that's good going on. They have these things, obviously this is still going to be your vertebral foramen, the one that your spinal cord goes through, but now you have extra holes called transverse foramina on either side. So those are your extra little holes you have. Um, can somebody get me an atlas and an axis? Can you get an atlas and an axis bone? All right, so what are some special things in thoracics? So thoracics, if you look on the superior articular process, they have a flat spot called um, a facet. So this is going to be your facets here, these flat spots. And also you have flat spots back here, flat spots, facets. Here and here on the centrum, you have little parts that indent in. These are going to be the demi facets. So the demi facets are here. And these are just going to be parts where basically the ribs attach to the little vertebrae. Uh, moving along, so then the sacrum. So this is our sacrum here. This used to be individual vertebrae that fused together in development. So what do we got? We have a median sacral crest, which is going to be this ridge of bone going down the center. So the median sacral crest is here. We then have the lovely LA, which is just these big wing-shaped projections on the sacrum here and here. So this is going to be your LA. The sacral foramina are going to be the holes. So it's going to be little holes here, 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 here. And then the promontory is going to be just this region right here on the bone of the sacrum. So that's going to be it for your sacrum. Now going back up to cervicals, so there's two special cervical vertebrae you need to know, and these are them. So one of these is going to be the atlas, one's the axis. How do you know the difference? The axis has a nub that sticks up. This nub is called the dens. I call it the dens. I don't call it the odontoid process, but you can call it either one. So this is going to be your axis bone, and this is going to be your atlas bone. The atlas bone is very flat. It doesn't really have a centrum, so it doesn't really have the body. And it actually sits on top of the axis bone and helps you spin around when you turn your head. Um, and your occipital condyles, which you guys should remember from the skull, sit right here in these two little flat spots right there. So this is the, at uh, the atlas, this one's the axis. C1, C2. Okay, so that's it for them. Now we're moving on to ribs. So if we look back here on Herbert again, so Herbert has different kinds of ribs. Think about what the rib connects to, to each other. So if we look at this rib right here, let's say, if we spin them around, it connects a vertebrae to the sternum. So it's going to be a vertebrosternal rib. So the first bunch, the first seven, are going to be vertebrosternal ribs. After that, we're going to start connecting vertebrae to cartilage. And the word for cartilage is chondro. So it's going to be vertebrochondral ribs. You have three of those. 
Then after that, you have two free-floating ribs down here that just connect just to vertebrae and nothing else. These are just gonna be your vertebral ribs, period. So yeah, vertebral sternal, vertebral chondral, vertebral. Here we go. Let's look at a rib individually. So here's a rib. So what are the parts in the rib? So again, it's just a typical rib, meaning it has all the different parts that the rib has. It's got a head, which is here, the neck, which holds onto the head, so head, neck. It's got a tubercle, and it's got a little flat spot you can see right here that's gonna be the facet that's on the tubercle. So the tubercle is the whole big lump. The facet's just gonna be the flat spot on the tubercle. The rest, this is all gonna be the body or the shaft, and if you look inside the body or the shaft, you can see this ridge, this kind of line, that's gonna be their costal groove on the inside. So that's gonna be your lovely rib. Uh, back over here to Herbert. Uh, this is gonna be your costal cartilage. Costal just refers to the rib, so this is gonna be cartilage of the rib. So costal cartilage is here. Uh, and as far as the lovely sternum goes, we have a better sternum over here, so I'm just gonna use this one. Remember, this is the same thing. See, they line up perfectly, so it's not an upside down, weird looking butterfly or something, no, no, no. It's the sternum plus the costal cartilage. So the sternum's got a couple of parts. It's got the manubrium, which is gonna be this top upper part here. You can see it again on this guy right up here. So this is your manubrium. The body is gonna be here, or the gladiolus, but I just call it the body because it's easier. So that's this guy here. And then the last part is gonna be the xiphoid process, which is just gonna be this little nub that kind of sticks down. So it's gonna be your xiphoid process here. And then you have two clavicular notches. So you can see the notch right here and then right here where your clavicles actually sit on your sternum. And you can see them sitting on Herbert right in the clavicular notches. This is gonna be your jugular notch, but you don't need to know that. So just clavicular notches on either side. That's it for the sternum, that's page number one. Okay, so now for bone histology or microscopic bone. These are obviously our models of the microscopic bone. So this is not a piece of cheese. Do not think it's a piece of cheese. So this basically is gonna be your microscopic bone. If we take one of these little things that looks kind of like a wedding cake and we zoom in on it, this thing is actually called an osteon. This whole model is just basically one giant osteon. So it's this whole central canal, which is the little canal in the center with all the rings around it is one osteon. So it's like I said, same thing as this. So what are the parts we need to find? First of all, we need to find the central canal. Central canal is pretty easy because it's in the center. So it's kind of like if you think of this big osteon as like a giant dartboard, the bullseye in the center is going to be your central canal. So you can see that here. You can also see it here. All these little bullseyes in the center of these dartboards are going to be central canals. Moving on, around our little central canals, we have rings. You can see these little rings, kind of like rings on a tree that go out, 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 out. These are going to be the lamellae. So if we look at the bigger one, again, central canal is here. This is going to be a lamella, a lamella, a lamella going all the way out. Each ring is going to be a layer of lamella. Lacunae are going to be these little open spaces that are located between the lamella. So these are just little spaces that little cells called uh, osteocytes or bone cells are going to live inside of. So the bone cell, the osteocyte, lives inside of a little space called a lacunae. So you can see it on this model. You can also see it on this model. So if we look here, these are not spiders, these are osteocytes, and the little osteocytes live in the little open spaces called lacunae. Uh, canaliculi, so remember bone cells are alive, so they need to be able to talk to one another, get nutrients and all that good stuff. So they have connections, so these little tubes are actually going to connect this osteocyte to this osteocyte, so they can talk to each other and share nutrients. So this is going to be a canaliculi here, it's just a little tube that connects osteocytes together. And you can see them on here too, for the little teeny tiny dashes in the bone that go across. You can see them here with the little extensions of the arms coming out. Last but not least, perforating canals, or Volkmans, you can call them Volkmans too. I think perforating because it means to poke a hole through something. So the canals that kind of go across a bunch of layers or perforate the layers are going to be these ones that go sideways. So these are Volkmans canals or perforating canals that are going sideways, whereas the ones that are going up and down are going to be your central canals. That's it for microscopic bone.